Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, Denise, just a minute. Something overcame me. <laughs> I'm going to preach from back here today. No, you know, there's times, though, that I really want to just come down there and stand with a music stand and preach. I, it, I, just, I, I just feel discombobulated sometimes. I'm going to do that today. Is that okay with y'all? Y'all care? I, I, want to, I, I just want to be down here today. I'm going to. I, ne I need to. I do. I need to be down there today. So, that song that we just sang, is that going to put a crimp on you, Denise? Good. I apologize now if it does. I don't know. I just, man, I've had this on my heart to come down here. When we travel a lot, when we're with Corey and, and we, we play music on you're used to be it. And then when dad and I go out and I minister to other things and, and uh, this is the way we do it. So being up there sometimes is, is different. It just doesn't. There's days when you go, you know what? I want to be down here. Amen. That song. This wasn't really going to be the opening, but it'll work. The Holy Spirit said it would. I know it will. There's a line in that song. And it says, because I never want to go back to my old life. I need you more. Holy cow. Have y'all ever thought about that? See, when we start going through things, do you realize that you're starting to let, if you're going through things, you have that choice, what we've learned here, which way are you going to go? You're going to go back to your old life? Man, that, that brings me to tears. Y'all don't know how many hours I practiced this week just so I wouldn't screw it up in church today. <laughs> you know? I think Laurie, Laurie loved the song, but I think after about Wednesday or Thursday, she might, I don't know, no. We've, we've praised and worshiped all week long in our house, man. I've had it blaring. And every time that line came up, man, the tears would just, because I don't, I don't want to go back to that life. Because I know what I have now. Oh, Jesus. Man, I know what it's like to be sold out for Jesus and walking for Jesus. And then I know that old life when I followed Jesus, but I didn't. I followed from way in the background. Now, I'm sure none of y'all have ever done that. So, but this, I'm preaching to myself. But I'm telling y'all, when I kept hearing that line, I'm like, I don't. And so it's a perfect opening to this message. Y'all find 2 Samuel toward the front of the Bible. Oh, man. Thank you, Father. 2 Samuel 22. The title of this message. Last time I preached, it was be right or be. This time I added a word. It's be right. I'm working up to a full sentence message, but we'll have to get approval for that. It might be, it might be a long day. I don't know, but no, I'm kidding. But the title of this message is called Be Right. 2 Samuel 22. You know, this, the Holy Spirit put this on me earlier in the week, and Everybody's going through something. And, 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 I, and when I say that, it can be small, minute little things, and it can be big things. This is a message today that the Holy Spirit wanted me to, to give to y'all. It's to build you up and to get you fired up. See, that's what that line so much spoke to me about is with going through things, why would I want to go back to that old junk? Amen? I love the way my life is. I love following the Lord. I love being able to minister to y'all. And I don't know about y'all, but we got the best pastor in the world. Amen? Man, we've seen, we see pastors and preachers all over the place. I am so blessed to be under Corey Ross. I'm telling y'all. I have learned so much about the Lord from him. And I'm very thankful. So the Holy Spirit really wanted me to encourage y'all this morning. And so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to learn, you know, sometime. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's good. A little private conversation. <laughs> you know, we have to learn how to be encouraged. You ever thought about that? 
Because you get people that want to build you up in your life. Some people don't want to be built up, you know? They want to be mad and, and fussy, crappy. And then there's people that go, yes, yes, I want to be built up. What's the word that they say? But. but. No. When you say but, you don't really want, you just said, nope, I don't want to be built up. But see, that's what God wants us, everyone in this room, to be built up today. But then he wants us to also help build somebody else up. Amen? Amen? See, that's our job as Christians. Our job as Christians is not to just come to church on Sunday, get what I get, go home, study the Word, be in the Word, come back on Sunday. Are you sharing it with anyone? Are you hogging God's Word? You know what hogging is? Is there anybody that doesn't know what hogging is? No, Brian, it's not a motorcycle. <sighs> Should have known. He doesn't know. No, but when you're keeping it to yourself, you know. So my wife, she hogs the cover every once in a while. No, she really doesn't. But see, are you getting built up at church? You go home, you study the Word, and then you don't share it with anybody. That's not what God intended for us. Amen. One thing he wants us to know this morning, let's start in verse 31. Everybody find 2 Samuel 22. Okay, we're going to start in verse 31. As for God, oh, thank you, Jesus. His way is perfect. Amen. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust him. He just, it says right here, his word is proven. Is what I was talking about during tithes and offerings. God said in Malachi to prove me, to test him. Well, right here it tells us his word has been tested. And then it's proven. And I don't know about y'all, but if you've ever read any of the news articles, they pop up every once in about some scientist trying to prove the Bible is not real, that God isn't real. And all they do is keep confirming more and more, and it really is real. Right? The, more, the harder they try to prove it's not, it is. Isn't that cool? Because the word of the Lord is proven. Verse 32, for who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? Verse 33, this is where we're going. God is my strength and power. Hallelujah. Man, when you are struggling and you're struggling, verse 33 tells us, wait a minute. He's my strength. He's my power. He makes my way perfect. Lord. Amen. In the in the uh, Amplified, it says, God is my strong fortress. He guides the blameless in His way and sets him free. That word blameless, I was really curious. Because blameless can mean several things. I mean, not guilty and, you know, acquitted. Or, but in the Hebrew, that word blameless means sound, having integrity. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see, if we're following what God says, it says, He guides the blameless. Amen? Y'all remember that word blameless for just a little bit. So I did what my wife has taught me over the last few years and, and last 10 or so. I broke this out because I was real curious. So it says, and God is my strength. And my strength in the Hebrew means a place or means of safety. That's what God's strength is. It's a place or means of safety. Now, when you just look at that word strength, your first, or my first thought was, it means strength, like this. That's not what it means. It means a place or a means of safety. And it says, and power. And and power means strength, efficiency, wealth, army. So God's power represents wealth as far as health, wealth, just like our tithes and offerings. That's God's power. But then God's power also represents army. He's got us. He's got us protected. He's our safe hold. And He makes. And He makes means to start up, set free, let loose. That's what that little phrase means. Perfect. 
See, in verse 33, he makes my way perfect. Well, I'll go to my way first. I skipped. My way means the road, distance, journey, or way. The reason I had those backwards is because when you go to the uh, interlinear, a lot of times like in Hebrew and Greek, some words come before the other words. And so like my way comes after perfect in, that, in the Hebrew. So perfect means complete sound. So y'all stop and let's just think about that for a minute. A place or means of safety and strength, efficiency, wealth, and army to start up, to set free, let loose my journey completely and soundly. Now, if you look at that, did you see all that in that verse? It didn't say all that there. But when you go and you break down that Hebrew like that, see, that's what's, you know, and I'm not a, a word, I'm, I'm not a nerd, but my wife is a nerd. And that's okay, because she'll admit it. She loves that stuff. And I find it interesting, but, that, but see, there's that but word. It, but in small doses, okay? It took Ricky... Oh, my Lord. You know, uh, the, uh, cause, uh, but that's so fascinating to me that those little things mean that it's, he's a place, that his, his strength, God is my strength. God is my safe place. See, that, but that's not how you read. That's not what it says, but it does say that. All you have to do is spend a little time to look up a few of these words. Amen? I encourage that. See, that's that deal of learning what the word means and go spread it to somebody else. Man, there's an app you can get for your iPad called Bible Hub. And you can go on there and you can put the Scripture in there. And you can go and you can read the Scripture. And you can read what some of them old theologian guys thought about it. Most of them, they're kind of weird. There's some things... In, because it always says you discern the Word of God. You want to make sure that it lines up with what you're reading is in the Word. But then, if, to find out what those words mean, you can hit that little deal, uh, interlinear, isn't that right? It says interlinear up at the top. And so, if it's in the Old Testament, it'll go to the Hebrew. It'll show you what those words mean in Hebrew. So cool. <laughs> and if I can do it, y'all can do it. Trust me. And I'm running an iPad doing it. Amen? Amen. That's how good our God is. But what he wants y'all to know, that all of us that are going through something, is that he is our place. He is our safe place. He is our strength. He's our army. He's our wealth. He makes, he starts up, he sets us free, lets loose. A perfect, a complete and sound road or journey. That's what that means. Isn't that cool? Ah, thank you, Lord. Go to uh, Psalms. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Go to Psalms 31. See, Jesus reminds us that he gives us the inner strength. And so when we start worrying and getting stressed out, that's when we have to remember, am I going to go back to my old way? And I'm going to get in worry and doubt and disbelief and unbelief and pity party Ricky and blah, 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 blah. Or am I going to go, wait a minute. Second Samuel said, God is my strength. He's my army. He's my wealth. If you're having financial difficulty, start sowing and speaking over your seed because that's what the Word of God says. And you've heard our pastor say it. I say it. The other ministers that preach up here say it. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up in the Bible for yourself because that's what we preach out of. Amen? Yeah. Because when you start looking it up yourself, you're going to be going, oh, he really did say that. And when you start reading, you're going, oh, he even said more. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. Everybody found Psalms 21, what did I say? 31? 31.24. Psalms 
Psalms 31, 24 says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. See, in, that, in the Hebrew, that word strength, or be of good courage, in the Hebrew it means to be or grow firm or strong or strengthen. See, God's telling us to be of good courage. He's telling us to get strength. And he's telling us that in order to get it, he'll do it. Wow. Whoa, whoa. Y'all wake up. Did y'all hear what I said? He said, be of good courage. He said, to build your strength up. But in the next deal, he says, he'll do it for you. Amen. What a God. You know, it's like our tithes and offerings. That he says that, and this is not, we already done a tithe message, but he tells us even in the tithes and offerings, he wants us to sow seed but if you follow that scripture, he says he provides the seed for the sower. I mean, what a God. Have y'all ever stopped and thought about that? Or do you just go, oh, I go to work, I go home. No, wait, this is some people. I go to work, yeah, I go to work, and I get home. Oh, man, what a day. What a day. And then the next day, oh, man, I got to go to work. No, you get to go to work. Thank God you have a job. Amen. Thank, thank God that you have a way to provide because he's your provider. He's going to provide you with a job. Amen? Oh, I'm getting to where I'm going. Golly, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're good. Whew. I read this in the Passion. The Passion is a great translation. In Psalms 31, 24, y'all listen to this. So I dare ask, and it's okay because you know, how many of you are willing to admit that you're going through something. I hold my hand up. You're going through something right now. Raise your hand up in here. Amen. Those others are just like, ah, I'm used to it. Amen. No, but if you're going through something, and what I just read to you is, the Passion Translation says this. Cheer up, Starla. That's what it says right there in the Passion. Cheer up, Dax. Cheer up, Roger, Trudy. It says cheer up. Take courage, all you who love him, listen to this. Wait for him. Everybody say wait. wait. Wait for him to break through for you. All who trust in him. Say breakthrough. breakthrough. Say I'm expecting a breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Now, when you say something, don't forget, we talked about last time I preached that when we ask for something, sometimes we don't add the in Jesus' name. I'm asking for breakthrough in my life right now in Jesus' name. That's what it says it'll do. Are you going to argue with this? I'm not. That's the truth. Hallelujah. And if you don't believe God, ask Him. He'll show you. Amen. Amen. He likes to show us that he loves his kids, y'all. You know, I talked to somebody the other day, and, oh, it was uh, a little girl that, a young, uh, you know, I turned 62 last week or week before, and so now it's like, I forget, but everything, everybody's a young girl now, or a young boy or, a, you know, I don't, they may be 40, but they're still young now, you know. Some of y'all going, boy, that ain't no lie. But, and so, oh, I remember what it was. We had the oil change in the car, and they, they brought it back. And so met them down at the gate. Laurie went with me. We walked down there. Well, I was glad she went because it was a young lady that brought it. But her pickup people weren't there. And we live out in the country, y'all. And the road that we live on is fairly busy. And I said, where's your ride? And she goes, well, that, they'll be here in a little bit. I said, it was 100 degrees outside. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to stay here by yourself. Oh, no, that's a, I said, no, no, you're not. I said, I would hope that somebody would sit with my daughters. I have four of them. And I said, I hope that somebody would sit with them. And I said, get in the car. So we got in the car and sat. We got to visiting with this young lady. She hadn't been working for the deal but three weeks. And I heard her say a few things. She just found out she's a single mom. Then we visited with her, you know, talked a little ministry with her and just... Didn't tell her we were. We just fisted with her. Single mom. And uh, she said she really had several years ago. She didn't look. Why are you laughing? She looked 16, but she bought, already bought a couple of places of property across from her parents. 
So they weren't expensive, and I paid for them, and I worked and got them paid off in six months instead of two or three years. And she said, but I want to put a house there someday, and I just don't know. And I said, girl, because she had worked at a, at a church. She had worked daycare at a church, but she said, man, that wears, wore me out after three years. She said, I needed a break. And so we talked, and I knew that she believed in, because I asked her, I said, so you know Jesus? And she said, yeah. And it was, I said, well, you got to start speaking to that land. Amen. And she goes, huh? I said, well, uh, it, what? We, we, we believe the Bible. And the Bible says you can call and speak to the mountain, call it be thou is not cast into the sea. Whatever you believe in your heart, then Jesus give it to you. And I said, let me give you an example. I said, when we bought this land, we were living in an RV out there. And then we got our house done. We didn't need the RV anymore. Well, RVs weren't selling a whole lot back then. But my wife, as we would leave our house and we'd drive up through the property and we'd drive by that RV, she goes, I call you sold in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, well, I call it sold too. Don't want to be outdone, you know. Yeah. So we started doing that. Thanks to her, we start speaking. Every time we go by that trailer, we call you sold in Jesus' name. It's about a month. Hadn't heard anybody. Nobody called. This guy calls. Meet me there the next day. Him and his wife, they were going to live in it with two kids and a Great Dane. In the first place, I did what Glenn Smith always did and said, thank God that's not me. <laughs> but in the second place, he said, we'll take it. I'll wire you $65,000 to your bank tomorrow. I said, oh, praise you, God. I mean, because we were still paying. We were making payments on it. We weren't trying to get rich off of it. We sold for what we owed. I just wanted to sell it to somebody else. Just pay it off. You can have it. I kept that little girl's like, really? Yeah. Because every time we drove by that RV, we started speaking. And she goes, I'm going to start doing that. We said, yeah. And she said, I've got blueprints drawn up. I said, look at you. You're already ahead of the game, girl. See, she's already, but that's how good our God is. When we start speaking those things, amen, that's what comes to pass. Was that a rabbit trail? So cheer up. Take good courage. Take courage. Wait for him. That wait, though, remember, we don't just not do nothing. You know, we don't go sit on the couch, get our blanket, and eat bonbons. Do they still make those? I mean, but no. But you see what I'm saying is we still have to continue in the Word and we have to speak the Word. And we have to speak God's Word. Not Ricky's Word. Not your Word. God's Word. Amen? All right, for time's sake, let's move to Matthew 4. Golly, our God is so good. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Matthew chapter 4, as y'all find that, I'll start telling you. This is where the Holy Spirit leads Jesus up to be tempted by the stinking devil. And let's start in, oh, let's start in verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Have you, this is what we're talking about. See, y'all are going through stuff. You're tempted to do things you wouldn't normally do, or you're tempted to quit, or you're tempted to give up. So Jesus is being tempted by the devil. Huh. He still, the, he was doing this over 2,000 years ago, y'all. It ain't nothing new. Look, and he hadn't figured it out yet. Because Jesus wouldn't be alive had he figured it out. You see, Jesus is still alive. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. I bet he was. Whew. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. 
The devil tempts Jesus and he uses the word. Amen. Amen? Oh, so wait a minute. The devil says, hmm, let me try this trick. Pulls it out. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear up, lest dash your foot against the stone. Oh, the devil's going to quote scripture now. Because, see, he knows scripture. But, see, there's that word, but. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Oh, thank you, Lord. You see, there's a, a verse that says that you shall not be tempted. God says he will not allow you to be tempted any more than a man can take. And, see, not but, but and, he will give you a way out. The perfect way out. So when you're tempted to quit... You're tempted to give up. You're tempted to go believe the doctor instead of God's Word. When you're tempted, when you're tempted, remember, no, you don't have to be. Because God said He will give you the perfect way out. Somebody say, yeah, thank you. Somebody say, hallelujah. That's good. And I just said what the Bible said. Amen? Because that's good. So let's go on. Again, the devil took him up exceedingly high and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. <laughs> Don't you, wouldn't you like to see what Jesus did? I mean, really. I mean, because, you know, I would have wanted to go, you've got to be kidding me. You know, that's me. But I just, you know, you, I, it's one of those deals. What, how did Jesus look at, you know, did he look at it or did he like, go on, you know. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Amen. Whew, the devil left. Amen. So in James 4, 7 there is a verse that says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Amen? That's what Jesus was doing. He was submitting to the Word of God. He was using the Word of God against the devil. And everything the devil tried, Jesus is like, no. Because Jesus submitted, and we submit, we do in it willingly and obediently. See, Jesus was obedient all the way to the cross, y'all. That's what the Word says. But you know, James 4, 7 is really cool. But a lot of times we don't, because I've, I've used that verse before when I preach, but I've never used the verse right next to it. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Oh, wait a minute. And, and when you submit to God, that means that we're going to start drawing near. It doesn't say that God will draw near to you, and then you draw near to God. No, that's not what it says. See, God's there. He's waiting on you to draw near. And then He's going to draw near. Amen. But why are you waiting on Him? Because He's been there. See, when we get tempted... And we get tempted. Oh, wait, I wrote. Let me, let me look. Let me look. So when I submit to God wholly, I'm giving my heart to God. So when you're trying to figure it out, submit to God. Amen. When you're struggling with temptation, submit to God. When you're struggling with fear, submit to God. When you're struggling with finances, submit to God. See, because all those things that are going on, whether it's caused, listen, listen to me, when it's caused by the devil, or sometime we make a bad decision. Sometime Ricky does something stupid, you know? And I'll use but God. But God. 
He doesn't care that I screwed up. Is just say, God, forgive me. What was I thinking? And he goes, forgiven, done. Now he doesn't remember. See, when we start submitting, we start drawing nearer to God, the devil is not going to stay around you because the Word says, submit to God, resist the devil, he has to flee. Amen? Somebody ought to be clapping on that. Jesus, man, he's so good. Woo! Y'all. So be right. What does that mean? Well, I told y'all to remember that word, blameless. That's what it means. Be right. It means high integrity. Highly integral. I can't tell. Okay, anyway, have integrity. <laughs> and what spurred a lot of this message on today with the Holy Spirit? He shut... I, we, Laurie and I, I was so, I was, she wasn't even there, I forgot. She was there, but wasn't there. Got it? We were in Marble Falls, and we had gone to H-E-B, and we just needed like one thing, so she goes, I'll run in, you drive around, come back and get me. I said, okay, because it's hot. So kept the air conditioner wide open, driving around. And there was one of those cart, those young men and girls, women, that put those carts up, God bless them. They work their ever-loving tails off. And people get in their way, and cars try to pass. I just want to get out and go, now don't do that. You be blessed. Because I'm, I'm, I'm good. At, I'm getting better. And I see this young man, and he's pulling. It must have been, I don't know, 50 or 60 cars. And he muscle boy. You know, he was in good shape. And he's dragging that thing, sweat pouring. I mean, it's, a, it's over 100 degrees. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He's dragging that thing up there. And so I made a second loop, and I passed the deputy sheriff's officer going in. And he's got the full vest on and gun belt. And I mean, you know, he's burning up. Bless his heart. Well, he goes in the store. Well, I make my loop. Go around there. Come back. She's still not out yet. And the deputy sheriff walks out with the sack, and he's doing this. And he sees that young man, and, he, and I, walk, I stop. I probably got traffic backed up behind me, but I'm going, what's, what's this? Deputy Sheriff walks over there, pulls out a bottle of red Powerade and gives it to that young man. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I got to see that. There are good people. Y'all are good people. But you know what happens to good people? We start looking for the bad things instead of looking for the good things. We start looking for the wrong things in the world that are going on and start looking on, what can I do right? Amen. That, oh, I told Laurie when I picked her up, I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you that I got to witness that. Amen. See, you have a young man that they talk about kids won't work and he's out there busting his tail and then people talk about how bad the police and the sheriffs and blah, 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 blah and a deputy goes in and buys a young man something cold to drink on 102 day and gives it to him. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's integrity. That's being right. And you know what? I will guarantee you he didn't care if anybody was watching. He didn't do this. He didn't go in and go, hey, I'm going to get a Powerade for that guy right there. Y'all watch me. And then when he come out of the store, he goes, hey, everybody, look, I'm giving this. He did not. See, he's doing it no matter who's looking or who's not looking. Amen. What are we doing? See, that's being right. Amen. That's why we get, we can be encouraged by God. What did he say? He said, cheer up. He wants us to do the right thing. That's what he tells us. That's walking with God. That's drawing near to God. Amen? And sometimes we know what the right thing is. But so, and, and so listen to that. We got plenty of time, y'all. There's not a buffet close. Dad, I wish there was. But listen to me. What's right sometime for me is not necessarily what's right for my wife. I mean, because in, so you have to understand the two differences because people get caught up in, well, so-and-so does it, so 
I'm going to do it. Or, you know, because, whoa, well, they're in the church and they do this, or I want what they have. No, 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 no. We get caught up in that. And last week, because I, I was saying, what made me, part of me that think of this, how do you, the Bible talks about having a prayer closet. I don't have a prayer closet. I have a bunch of them. See, God deals with, he, you may have a prayer closet, and that's perfect for you. That's right for you. My prayer closet is sometime the cab of my pickup for five hours. My prayer closet sometime is hauling water back and forth to my house and dumping it in that storage tank. Sometime I even pray when I go play golf that I will have birdies and pars. <laughs> hey, he said he'll never leave us and never forsake us, but he didn't say he'd make the putt for me. I have to do that. But do you see what I'm saying, y'all? So understand those differences are that what's right for Clay or Trey is not right for me. Doesn't work. But is God's right, word right for everybody? Yes, it is, because that's the truth. Amen? So let me find it. I wrote down four things real quick as we close. So the, to be right, to encourage you, well, some of you go, well, be right. See, that's right standing with God. That's doing the right thing. Amen. Well, because people go, well, am I doing the right thing? I can't tell you that. I can tell you how to start that process. So to, to be right, the first thing, you've got to learn to take responsibility for your own actions. True. Amen? Amen? That's what we were talking about during communion. When you take communion, you've got to examine your heart. You. You ask God, show me, look in the mirror, show me what I need to fix. The more I fix, the closer I get to God. The more I submit, the more I submit, the more I submit, and I draw nearer to God. And then he's right there going, you got it, come on, come on, come on. See, Romans 14, 12 says, we each have to give an account of our own life. As much as I'd like to take family with me or, you know, some of y'all and have you stand up for me, that ain't happening. I have to be responsible for my own actions. That's the start of how do I be right. But the, here's the other thing. To, being responsible for your own actions is you have to be able to admit them and fix them. Amen? Number two, you got to want to do what's right. That's that want. I mean, you've got to want to do it right. Amen. John 14, 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He's telling us what to do, y'all, how to be right. Keep his commandments. If you'll go up just a few verses above that, he also says that those like us that come will do greater things than he did. Jesus says that. If you believe in me, you'll do greater things than I did. I don't know about y'all, but I, I, was in, I just took my breath away. When that guy got water, he, it was his power aid. But it's the same thing Jesus does. He gives water to people that need it. And this guy's doing an actual action of that. That's what you do. See, that's how we start being right, is we follow Jesus. That we keep His commandments. Number three, you got to know what the right thing is. Right? Hey, you can't do right if you don't know what right is. Jesus said, follow me in Joshua 21, or John 21, 19. It made me think of something. i got a scripture written down I need to read to y'all. Oh, yeah. So, when we're doing the right thing, believe me, if you haven't been, it'll ha we see it a lot. Now, Christians are being persecuted. I mean, people talk trash about Christians all the time, right? I mean, it's what it is. Are you going to let it bother you? You're going to keep speaking the Word of God. You're going to speak the Word out loud of God to people to help people. Amen? Amen. So, you're going to either be bold or not. So, I, but I love this. This is 1 Peter 2.15. It says, For so is the will of God... That with well-doing, well-doing, doing right, 
You may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Yes. Amen. When you start speaking the Word of God, because it's written here, that's the Word of God too, but the Word of God here, when we start speaking that Word of God, the ignorance of all those other people start coming to light. Because we never sway from what the Word of God is. You know what I'm saying? See, if we stay in the Word of God, like He wants us to stay, and we stay grounded in the Word of God, we never change. The Word does not change. We change. But if we learn how to stay hooked in the Word of God, He says, cheer up. God says, cheer up. You're staying in the Word. And what's going to happen is, those foolish men will be exposed. And women. We don't discriminate here. Okay? But you see what I'm saying? And I love that verse. I'm glad I remembered I had that written down because when, see, there's one thing about getting persecuted. When I first started in the ministry, that took me back a little bit. I'm being honest. But you know, I learned real quick that I have a choice. I have a choice that I'm going to be in, all in, all sold out, or guess what? I can get out now. Amen? And thank you, Jesus, I'm still here. Because no matter how bad people do me, or do I see in the world, I see the junk, I know what the Word says about that. It says those... Well, that wouldn't be be changing the Word. (laughs) I can't say it that way. The ignorance of foolish men will be exposed. How's that? You can't call them ignorant people, I don't guess. That probably wouldn't be very preacher-like or, I don't know. Amen? Number four, the last thing, and we're closing. You must have a plan. You got to have a plan. What's the plan? The plan is the Word. The plan is the Word of God. The plan is to be in the Word of God. You say, oh, well, you know, I start, and then I start and stay. Stay in it. I've been right where you're at. If you say, oh, I, I, you know, I just come to church. I was there. And then I got into the Word. And you know what? There was times when I'd read for two or three days and then I'd miss for two or three days. And I'd go, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be in the Word more. Nah, nah, nah. And that's the devil going, yeah, see, I told you. I told you. But when I submitted, that devil don't talk that way no more. Amen? Amen. Because I'm submitted to my God. My God says, anything I go through, He's got it. Amen. Let Him do it. Amen? Y'all can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Whatever you're going through today, I say be gone right now in the name of Jesus. It's up for y'all to receive that and go home with that attitude. Amen. And then tomorrow morning when you get up, and the coffee's cold, and it's like a grumpy, mumpy Monday, and you don't want to do it, that's that choice you have. Submit or be the other way. Amen. Submit or be right. You be right and submit. Don't be grumpy, mumpy. Amen? Gosh, I hope this has helped somebody today. I hope it has. Man, Lord, you're so good. Father, we thank you right now. Oh, we praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you that you're our strength. You're our fortress, Father God. You're our refuge and our strong tower and our safe place. And that you make a way for us, Father God, when we don't know sometime which way's up. But we know that if we submit to you, Lord, that you take care of it. Amen. Father God, that we, we search And that we draw near to you, Father God. And that we crave you. That we continually seek your face diligently, Father God. Oh, we just thank you so much. Father, we never do a service without giving somebody the opportunity to accept Jesus, their Lord and Savior. If there's somebody here today that hasn't ever accepted Jesus yet, it's never too soon to do it. But right now, I beg you. If you haven't, you said, man, I I believe, but no. Get rid of the butt. It's time. So if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we're going to say a prayer. We're going to say it out loud. 
But we're going to have all the believers in here help us. Because like it's, we've been talking, y'all, it's time. Let's be bold in Jesus' name. Come on. So if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to do it today. So we're going to say this prayer. I want you to say it out loud. Believers, y'all help us. Say, Father in heaven, I open the door of my heart. And I ask you to come in and cleanse me, Father God, from all unrighteousness. Father, save me. And I thank you that Jesus died on that cross for me. He took all those beatings for me. And the disease. Father, we just love you. Lord, thank you. That today, I'm being right. Thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed still, if that was you, that you just gave your heart to Jesus for the first time, that you said it out loud, I want you to get your hand up on the count of three and then put it right back down. Nobody looking around. One, two, three. Put your hand up if you just accepted Jesus. This morning. Anybody? Anybody? All right, everybody look at me. All right. Well, so bring some folks to church next week. Amen. Miss Sharon, would you do me the honor of closing for me this morning?